Hey everyone, hope you all had a really wonderful Christmas and New Year period. I know I did, it was a little bit crazy, a little bit busy, um, but I had a really good time and I hope you all did too. Thank you so much for your support over the entire of last year and how amazing you've all been. This year I'm hoping is gonna be even better. I'm gonna keep continuing to like grow my content and try and improve it and try and improve my channel for you guys. Before we start, in the background of the video here, I say in the back of the video, just in the background of the room, I have two little puppers joining me today. I have my beautiful Kyra and I also have Miguel who is a little nine-year-old chihuahua. He is Kyra's friend slash adopted cousin. We're friends with his parents, they're both lovely. Miguel is an absolute little angel. So you can probably hear them both snuffling around. They're both gonna be snuffling around in the background and pitter pattering, so sorry if you can hear them. Okay, now that rambly start is over. Today we are gonna be looking at a little bit of a disturbing blog post by someone whose content we've looked at before. The blog is called Biblical Gender Roles and you might remember this guy because he did the whole why women should stay with their abusive husbands thing. Yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> well, this guy who doesn't really have a name, I don't think. You know, he likes to hide behind his anonymity online. Uh, not surprising with some, some of the things he posts. He is back with a post titled, Why a wife should endure painful sex with her husband, which is equally as disturbing and dangerous as a lot of the stuff of his we've addressed before. Few kind of like disclaimers and points before we really get into the meat of this post. While I really wish that the man writing this in this blog was satire, I'm not really convinced that they are. I really, really wish they were, but just, the quantity of output, how long he's been doing this, and some of the things he writes, the amount of comments he deletes, and the amount of comments he kind of promotes from other people, it's a little bit worrying and I don't think it's satire. And regardless of whether it is or isn't, the fact that this information is being put out there and that there are people who take it seriously and who do, do follow it literally, means that to me it is worth critiquing and commenting on and talking about and raising awareness of. Unlike a lot of the people that I talk about on this channel where I tend to say, they seem like nice people, I think they have good intentions, I'm not sure this guy does. I honestly think that everything he writes comes from a very selfish perspective, even if he's not aware of that, which is why he's one of the few people I don't feel bad critiquing his blog posts, because I do think they have ill intentions and they will have pretty bad consequences if people follow his um, advice. And I already know this guy doesn't like me. He's responded to me before, and while I didn't watch his whole video because it was kind of boring, his main criticism, critis, criticism, can't speak, his main criticism of me was that I spend too much time thinking for myself and not enough time blindly following the Bible. <laughs> it's a criticism I'm very willing to accept because that is exactly what I do and that is exactly what I encourage other people to do. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist like me or if you are a Christian or any other religion, I think it's very, very important that you never just blindly follow what's told to you or what's written in front of you or what's always been done or what's tradition. I think it's very important that we all question our beliefs, our actions, our motives, and the motives and actions of other people. And we all think about why we're doing stuff, not just blindly following it because it's in a book. I have made plenty of videos in the past talking about why I don't think the Bible in particular is this infallible, perfect source, you know, the ultimate authority of information and whatever, like a lot of people think it is. So I'm not gonna repeat myself too much in this video, I'm not gonna go into too much depth on that sort of stuff. We're just gonna kind of take it for, not for granted, but we're gonna take it as a given at this point that I don't believe the Bible is the ultimate authority on all things um, and kind of like take it from there. So, you know, if you wanna hear more about that kind of Bible stuff, go check out some of my other videos. I have a whole like atheism playlist you can check out if you want. But anyway, enough of this boring stuff. Let's get into ha actually having a look at this blog post that was sent to me by one of you lovely lot on Twitter. Thank you to you, by the way. Give me a second, I'm gonna go see what Miguel's doing. All right guys, this little cutie here, he's Miguel. Oh, we need to censor out your boy parts. I wanna stay monetized. You should Miguel. You're gonna say hi, babe. Say hi. Say hi. Gonna send your mum and dad this video, tell them you're famous. Yes. <laughs> Good boy. Go on then. Go be a little terror again. They're so sweet. Even if they... Oh, bless you. Bless you. They're so cute, even if they are little monsters. Hang on, I'm sure he's getting in the food bag. This little rascal here has just been found ripping up Kyra's food mat. So he's in a little timeout here. A minute. You're gonna stay here with me, aren't you? A beast. So, kind of like me, before he actually gets into any of this content, uh, Biblical Gender Roles guy, he likes to have a little bit of a rambling intro, so you know, 
that's something we have in common. Um, and he wants to clarify a few things before he gets into his content. So in the interest of not misrepresenting him, um, he does note that he's apparently not going to be encouraging the following. Men sleeping with their wives after childbirth or surgery, sadism, or women ha having to stay quiet if they're in pain. So, um, that's good, I guess. He can recognise at least some of these, what should be basic things. But this is literally the highlight of the whole post. It's as good as it gets. It's all, all downhill from here. Next up, he gets all defensive because he knows that people like me will criticise him for the ideas and advice that he's giving in this post. So he wants to be able to, you know, clap back with the easy out of saying like, well, this article wasn't for you anyway. So he does this whole thing. I also want to take a moment to highlight point number three on this list, where he's like, don't read this article if you think sex is not a need and is only for pleasure and no reasoning to the contrary will convince you otherwise. So this is a point I've seen raised quite a bit in blog posts and YouTube videos, surprisingly mostly by kind of like the incel community, by certain MGTOW members, um, and even this biblical gender roles guy in the past. They seem to think, they have this idea that sex especially for men, is a need. It's a right. It's something that they're owed. Women have a duty to sleep with men. And if they don't, oh, they're disgusting. They're horrible. They're abusers. It, it's really bizarre. And I can't believe I even have to make this clear, but they're wrong. That's wrong. That viewpoint isn't right. I'll admit, sex is a very natural thing. Um, having sexual urges, having sexual attractions is a very natural thing. It's something that all animals experience, especially mammals like us. In human adults, sexual arous arousal, sexual urges, wanting to have sex with people is completely normal and natural and not something we should be ashamed of, is not something we should pretend isn't happening, is something that we should acknowledge and honestly, embrace. I mean, obviously there are exceptions, you know, there are asexual people and so on, but in general, sex is a normal thing. However, I don't think it's an individual need, it's a want, and I think there's a big difference there. From a kind of like evolutionary biology perspective, yeah, for an entire population, sex is a need, right? A population requires its members to have sex to reproduce, to continue on genetic lines. But unlike things like food, water, oxygen, an individual isn't going to die if they don't get sex in a certain amount of time. Which is why I think it's very different from, you know, food, water, oxygen. It's not this individual need that a lot of men like to pretend it is. Yes, I believe sex should be mostly about pleasure, um, but I understand that for some people, you know, the primary reason, I guess you could say, for having sex um, is, isn't always that. Some people want to use sex mostly for reproduction, um, and that's, that's fine. But that doesn't negate the fact that sex should always, and without exception, be consensual. And nothing is going to convince me otherwise there. If we're talking specifically about the topic of whether a woman should have to endure painful sex with her husband. Um, he, he skips around a little bit in this introduction. His ideas aren't very clear from the offset. He, he opens his kind of like ideas by uh, just pointing out a few of the comments he's got in the past, but I do want to kind of skip over these and move directly, for, you know, brevity's sake, directly to the points where he gives like direct advice on this topic and this question. He applies a few biblical principles, including the following. Uh, which I have really big issues with, not just as an atheist, but as a person. Some of these being, God created woman for man, not man for woman. God equates a man's need for sex with his need for water. The New Testament tells us that sex is the natural use of the woman by man. A woman's desire for sex and her ability to enjoy sex was not given to her for her own sake, but rather for the sake of her husband to complement and enhance his sexual pleasure. All Christians, both men and women, are called to emulate Christ's endurance in the face of suffering and pain, especially for the benefit of others. And this is so bizarre to me, like I say, not just as an atheist, but as a person. Not only are these ideas completely outdated, um, but, you know, they also ignore same-sex couples, they ignore transgender people, 
and they ignore asexual people, and they completely objectify women. And I don't just mean objectify women in the kind of like fluffy, we can slightly twist this to look like objectification, Anita Sarkeesian saying, ooh, you can see Catwoman's bum but not Batman's bum, kind of way, but in the actual, literal, he's objectifying women. All women way. He's saying women are sexual objects for men. Women aren't beings in their own right. Without men, we're nothing. We can't enjoy sex in our own right. We only enjoy sex because that makes men enjoy sex. We are playthings for men. We are objects for men. It's horrific. It's not only completely incorrect, but it's a dangerous message to send, and that's why I wanted to talk about this today. I personally have a lot of young female viewers, mostly young women in their kind of late teens, early 20s, and I don't want this kind of message getting to them. I don't want any of them to hear this kind of message and think there's any kind of merit in it, because there's not. Women are individuals in their own right. We're not just there to please men, sexually or otherwise. Of course, with everything I'm about to talk about, there are exceptions to the rules, you know. I'm gonna talk very generally and make some very generic statements, but obviously it doesn't apply to every single couple, every single kind of person and so on, so I am aware of that. You know, for example, it's worth remembering that asexual people exist, which is something that Biblical Gender Roles guy clearly forgets about. Um, it's also worth mentioning that, you know, some people have like kind of dom sub kinks uh, where the whole like submission thing and like pain thing and whatever, like th there are cases where this sort of stuff will work out and be what the people want. Basically what I'm saying is like not every couple is the same, but I, but I just want to talk very very generally and very very basically, but it is worth noting there are exceptions even if I don't have time to go over every single one of them in this video. I want all people but especially young women, I think, because I think they're probably the most vulnerable to, not exactly to misunderstanding this, but being told the wrong things about this. But I want all people to know that when you have sexual urges, it's completely natural. And sex is something you can enjoy for yourself and you should never be ashamed of. Women are not just a tool for men. We're not just a plaything for men. We're not just objects for men. No one should ever treat their partner as anything other than an equal and, in, and an individual. As a general rule, men never treat women as anything less than an equal, an individual, and a partner, and women never let yourselves be treated as anything less than an individual, and a partner, and an equal. And obviously the same goes the other way around as well. Women don't treat men as inferior or whatever. And y you know what I'm trying to say. Point is, especially when it comes to relationships and friendships, there shouldn't be a gender imbalance. Yes, different genders may do different things, but there should never be a power imbalance. When it comes to all relationships, whether it be a friendship or a sexual relationship or a romantic relationship, the enjoyment and safety and comfort of both people involved should be the priority, not just one person's or the other's. Thing is, when it comes to the specific topic of like women's pain during sex, it can to some extent be a complicated topic, right? Without being too graphic, you know, there are medical issues that can result in sex being painful, and those women who experience that regularly will probably want to see a doctor about it, and often something can be done to help them, right? But if we want to get completely real for a second, for the average healthy adult woman, the simple truth is sex should not be painful, and if it is, it indicates that you and your partner aren't doing something right. Biologically speaking, the vagina is designed to stretch enough to pop out a baby. Therefore, regardless of what some of this guy's commenters think, no matter how big your partner is, sex hurting you shouldn't be a normal thing that you just accept or expect. If a woman is comfortable and relaxed and aroused enough, sex shouldn't hurt. It's as simple as that. And if sex is hurting you, then perhaps the solution is something as simple as asking your partner to go slower at times, or to use more lubrication, or maybe it is an indication of a medical issue that you want to get checked out, or, or something else. But for the average healthy woman, sex shouldn't hurt. Like I say, there's a lot of exceptions and what ifs and this and this, and it can be a little complicated, but for the average healthy woman, having consensual sex with another adult, there's no reason why sex should consistently 
hurts. And if it does, it's not something you should ever feel you have to endure. If it does hurt, and this is a consistent problem that you're having, it is worth speaking to your partner about. No, it's not worth speaking to your partner about. Do speak to your partner about it. Make them aware of it. Sex is for both people, regardless of what people like this biblical gender roles guy try and tell you. When he says it's mostly for the man, he's wrong. It's for everyone involved equally. If you're not 100% comfortable and happy, you have every right to do something about it, whether that's to stop, or ask to change something up, or postpone it until another time. If you really do want to try and just endure the pain and hope it gets better or goes away or whatever and shut your eyes and ignore it, you also have every right to do that, but you should be doing it for you, not just to make your partner happy. Anyway, that's my little lecture out of the way, let's get back to reading some of the stuff from biblical gender roles. He does have some good points, such as pointing out, uh, should a wife seek out help from her doctor if she experiences painful intercourse? Absolutely yes. Some causes of pain can be helped with medication or sometimes even surgery. Brilliant, that's similar to what I said, I agree with it. Uh, but then he goes on to say stuff like this, where he just completely discounts women's comfort in favour of men's feelings. It's kind of weird. And when I say like women and men here, like, it's interchangeable, the gender doesn't matter. When you have two people having sex, one person's feelings shouldn't trump the other's physical comfort, you know? So he writes, might some types of pain be avoided simply by the husband making some changes in his methods? Of course. And wives should find respectful and gentle ways to direct their husband in this regard. Okay. Should a woman hide her pain from her husband? Some women might use visual cues of pain to help their husbands understand what hurts and what does not. This can be used, but should be used carefully. If it is used to help improve sex and not shame her husband, then it can be a good thing. I just, I don't get this. What's so wrong with sex being about both people being equally comfortable and happy? Why is that such a novel idea to him? It's the little things like saying, some women might use visual cues of pain, but these should be used carefully. Oh, you just, it's so outdated and ridiculous. Like, you know, she could do that, or, like a mature adult, she could just speak to him and say, oh, th this hurts, let's try such and such instead. And like an adult, he could respond with, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, let's try that instead. A couple should be able to talk openly and honestly and bluntly when it comes to the physical side of their relationship. And if they can't, that kind of says to me that maybe they're not ready to be in a physical relationship. If a woman has to, like, you know, just... <sighs> <clears throat> you know, if she has to give weird cues like that and the man is just expected to pick up on it, then you're not gonna get anywhere, are you? Just be open and honest and talk to each other. And if someone's doing something you don't like, tell them. Don't be ashamed of it. And if someone tells you that you're doing something they don't like, don't be offended, don't feel ashamed, don't feel guilty, just apologize, try something different, move on like an adult. It's not an insult to your masculinity or femininity or whatever. It's just two people trying to, you know, have a good time with each other. That's all it is. And you need to communicate with each other for that to happen. A woman being too afraid to say to her partner that something hurts or that they're uncomfortable with something, or if she can only drop hints about it, says to me that she's a little too immature to maybe be having sex and she needs to reconsider things and work on herself a little bit more first maybe. Again, not in every case, you know, in some cases um, a woman might be scared because of like issues in the past and whatever, like, like I say, there are exceptions. But in general, I just think you shouldn't be afraid to tell your partner something. Again, if a man is going to feel shamed or angry or insulted because a woman says, oh, you're hurting me, can we not just do this right now? Like, if a man's gonna get all defensive about that, again, that just screams immaturity to me, and again, maybe he's not ready to be having sex if he can't communicate properly with his partner. Like I say, there are exceptions, this isn't true for every single person, every single couple, but in general, I think that for a mature, healthy sexual relationship, you have to communicate well with your partner and don't get insulted when someone wants to work on something that's gonna make things better for the both of you. And also never feel ashamed about asking someone not to do something that's hurting you. If you are uncomfortable, if you're in pain, if you're just worried about something, talk to your partner. Don't feel embarrassed about that. Don't feel ashamed about that. Ask, talk to them. It's, you have every right to do that. And um, as he goes on with the article, it gets worse. He says, however, what if after seeing a doctor, the doctor tells her the source of her pain cannot be cured. And there is nothing her husband can do differently to make this pain go away. The answer is clear, even if it's not easy. A wife who suffers from chronic pain and untreatable 
I'm gonna say this wrong. Dyspareunia. Dyspareunia. Painful intercourse must find the strength to endure su such pain and not only endure it, but hide it as much as possible from her husband. The reason she should hide this is for her to do her best to fulfill one of the purposes for which God designed her, and that is the sexual pleasure of her husband. In general, with relationships, like I said before, whether it be romantic or sexual or a friendship, whatever, in general, I don't believe any relationship is ever going to be as healthy as it could be if one person is hiding something from the other. E even if it is to spare their feelings, you know? And I get that so many parts of religion are about enduring often unnecessary pain because they think it makes someone else, usually God, happy. This idea of like enduring suffering for other people and enduring this for this, like it, it's, a, it's a thing I see repeated a lot in Christianity and like Catholicism, um, but across a lot of religions actually. And it's just, it's not something I can get behind. And I especially can't get behind anyone pushing the same narrative in the context of relationship. I admit that there are times, and like usually extreme times, when I would very gladly give my life or put myself in danger to spare Dan or Kyra or my sister or my friends or my family, whatever. Like, yeah, there are times when I would do that. And I guess you could say that's like me suffering for the benefit of others. I get that, but I cannot possibly like even begin to extend that logic there towards telling someone to endure and hide extreme physical pain so their husband can have an orgasm. I, I don't get it. It's like if someone was pointing a gun at someone I loved, I'd jump in front of the bullet. I can't extend that logic to saying, I will put myself through extreme physical pain so you can orgasm. I just... No. I do get that there are some couples who will agree uh, that they want to try sex anyway, even if it's going to hurt the woman. But in these cases, I think it should be a decision that the both of them make, that the both of them consider um, in great detail and discuss and talk about. And if they do decide to go down that route, it should be for both of them, because it's going to make both of them happy. It's not just about the woman doing her duty to please her man, you know? It's not just because she feels she owes her husband something. And in those cases where a couple does agree on that, I would hope that the man would be extra considerate towards his partner to make sure that, you know, he does whatever he can to make her as comfortable as possible and that the pain is as minimal as possible and so on. I can honestly think of no cases where it would be beneficial to anyone really, but especially the woman, for a woman to hide her feelings, especially when they're feelings of pain, like physical pain. I think it's completely selfish of someone to ask that of their partner, for them to say, can you just like, pretend I'm not hurting you so I can finish. It, no, that's not normal, that's not human, <laughs> that's not nice, it's not considerate, it's it's awful. And then there's like the typical Christian guilt uh, in this blog post too, when he writes stuff like, are you willing to lay aside your pride, your discomfort, and even your chronic sexual pain, and to endure such pain to fulfill one of the purposes for which God created you, which was to bring sexual pleasure to your husband? Are you willing to do this without an attitude, without trying to pass your suffering onto your husband in order to make him not want to have sex with you? Maybe. It's just, Oh, he does this throughout the article and there's like quite a lot of cases of him like guilting women into feeling they have this duty to endure pain for their men and if they don't do that they're not good Christians and they're not good wives and they're not good people and blah 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 and they're probably going to hell. I can't believe I even have to say this but can we just stop shaming people for not wanting to be in physical pain? Seriously. If a person doesn't want to have sex with someone else regardless of who that someone else is and regardless of their reasons for not wanting to have sex they have every right to say no. A person should never, ever, ever feel ashamed or guilty or unable to say no to someone else. This guy is completely wrong. It is never anyone's duty to have sex with someone else. Someone never owes sex to someone else. And someone else never owes you sex. Sex should be this consensual thing between two people. It's never a duty, it's never something you have to do, and it's never something you should feel pressured into doing. Whether you're a Christian or an atheist or you have any other beliefs, your body is yours and yours alone, and you should never let anyone tell you otherwise, regardless of if you're married or single or divorced or, you know, one of four wives in a polyamorous thing. I, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling here. <laughs> the point is, 
your body is yours and you have every right to decide what does and does not happen to it. Uh, he goes on to write this, starting with a quote from a commenter that says, I still maintain that if a woman is crying through the whole experience, the man is doing something wrong or she has medical issues which should be addressed. Uh, he writes then, but is it true that if a woman is crying through the whole sexual experience, that it is automatically the man doing something wrong? The answer is no. I really struggle to come up with any logical explanation or any like logical circumstance where a woman crying through the whole sexual experience is a positive thing. I just can't, I can't think of any case where a woman crying throughout the whole thing is good. I mean, there are a few exceptions. For example, I know that if a woman experiences very intense emotions, she can sometimes let out a few happy tears and stuff like that. But when we're speaking in the context of like pain in sex, if you know someone is in pain when you have sex with them, and they are, to quote, crying through the whole sexual experience, yes, that means there's something wrong. And that means the man should stop or change things up, or at least talk to his partner and be like, God, are you okay with this? However, according to the biblical gender roles guy, a lot of this is the woman's fault. Most of the time it's the woman's fault, actually, rarely the man. He says, it really does depend though on the woman. What is rough? Some women like are like china dolls, and any amount of friction or thrusting during sex may be considered rough to them, when it really is not, and they simply need to endure and strengthen themselves. So at this point, he's telling women what is and isn't too much for them. Um, and if someone does something that a woman doesn't like, usually the woman needs to man up a bit. This is literal victim blaming. This is like me saying, well, if you weren't so weak, you wouldn't have broken so many bones when I threw you down the stairs. It, it's so ridiculous. You can't blame a woman for being in pain sometimes and say that she needs to toughen up and get over it and man up and meh meh meh. It, it's disgusting. He nearly gets something right in the next couple of paragraphs where he says, husbands and wives both need to adjust to one another when it comes to sex. Yes, thank you. I'm good with that. I support that statement except when he ruins it with the next bit that says, sometimes a man may have to make some changes for his wife, but at the same time, a woman might have to endure some things for her husband. The problem here is that make some changes would usually be referring to something like, let's use more lube, or let's go a bit slower, or let's change position. Whereas a wife having to endure some things for her husband is probably referring to intense, tear-inducing physical pain. And I just don't see those two things as equal. Like, oh, sorry, a man has to use a little bit more lube, but a woman has to feel like someone is ripping her vagina in half. They're not, not even, are they? They're not equal. They're not the same. He writes, from a Christian perspective, we must realize that sometimes it could be the woman who is in the wrong for crying throughout the entire sexual experience. If a woman is crying to manipulate her husband because she simply did not want to have sex or to make him feel bad for wanting sex when she did not, then the sin lies with her. Everything is wrong with this. He goes on to claim that women should sleep with their husbands no matter what because men are like flowers and a man's affection and his passions for his wife is fueled by two things, sex and respect. It's very caveman, isn't it? Sex is like water for a man's affection and respect is like the sunlight for a man's affection. If a woman gives him both, in most cases, she will find her husband's affections for her will be strong and healthy. If either of these are missing, his affection for his wife may wane and die. So, even aside from spiritual reasons, there are very practical reasons that a woman should gladly endure painful sex with her husband in order to water his affection for her. So, he's completely ignoring several things. For example, one, women like sex too. Two, not all men are like 50-50 controlled by sex and how much you grovel to them. Three, asexual people exist too. Four, I'm pretty sure if a man loves and respects his partner, he won't want them to be in pain. And five, there are many, many more facets to a good, functional, healthy, happy relationship than just sex and men being respected. What about mutual respect? What about love? What about friendship? What about shared hobbies and interests and goals and aims? And what about building a life together? It's a lot more complicated than he makes out and it's just, he has a very weird, both immature and outdated um, opinion of what sex is and how relationships should be and um, I do find it quite interesting. Then he goes on to conclude with things like uh, women need to suck it up and men's needs come first and if you don't let yourself get hurt for a man, then you're going to hell, and blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's all there is to the article. I got a little Miggeroo here with me, still. Say hi, Miggy. You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi and wave? Good boy.
Good boy, Miggy. Mm, I love this little bug. He's so cute. You're the best dog nephew I could have, aren't you? I love how much him and Kyra are getting on now. They're really good friends and it's really cute. Um, so I am gonna end this video here. I've gotta go feed these two little ones and take them to the pee place, the park. Can't say it too loud because Kyra will hear and she'll get all excited and start jumping around. But let me know what you thought of this article. Let me know what you think about biblical gender roles in general. If you wanna see my other video I've done uh, talking about his stuff in the past and I'll link it in the description down below. But like I say, let me know your thoughts on this article. Let me know what you think about this idea of um, women having to endure physical pain for their men and silly stuff like that. But for now, thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you all have a wonderful 2019 and um, yeah, it's to a good year. I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you so much to everyone who watched today and to everyone who is supporting me on Patreon this month, including Gambit and Chauffeur, Dave Sean, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Corthy, Jaylee Moore, Sir Michael Moore, Christian Opitz, Sage Villarreal, Greg Ladd, Spencer Young, and Lauren Hart. And to everyone else who's mentioned on this end screen and down in the description below, thank you so, so much. And to everyone who watches my channel, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and just a wonderful little December. And thank you all so much.